Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. I think we're ready to get this show on the road. Uh, so my name is Patty Monahan. I am a commissioner at the California Energy Commission. And today I am thrilled to announce the nation's first ever incentive project for zero emission truck and bus infrastructure. The project is called Energized Commercial Vehicles, or in longhand, Energy Infrastructure Incentives for Zero Emission Commercial Vehicles. Today's program includes brief remarks from two other speakers who, are, who will unveil details of this $50 million project. But we're not just gonna show, we're not just gonna tell you, we're gonna show you too. After some brief remarks from our speakers, we're gonna take you on a virtual tour throughout California to three sites featuring the kinds of technologies that could be eligible for funding under this new initiative. CalStart was recently selected to administer the $50 million multi-year project, building on the organization's long track record of running successful programs. So we recognize that it can be hard for fleet to navigate both the grant application process and the transition to electric vehicles. CalStart will use a concierge-like model, working directly with eligible applicants to help plan and fund the purchase of charging and hydrogen fueling infrastructure. The project is funded by my agency, the Energy Commission's Clean Transportation Program, which invests about $100 million per year to accelerate the deployment of advanced transportation and fuel technologies. The Energized Commercial Vehicle Project builds upon a similar model that we've used for building out charging infrastructure for passenger cars called the California Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Project, or Cali VIP. Now we're turning our focus to trucks and bus buses, which are some of California's biggest polluters. Diesel-powered vehicles are major contributors to toxic particulate matter and smog-forming nitrogen oxide. Communities of color are disproportionately impacted by this harmful air pollution, and the Energized Project will help address this critical public health issue. Accelerating zero emission infrastructure helps fuel California's clean energy economy, attracting manufacturers and creating jobs. It also supports Governor Newsom's recent executive order, which mandates that all operations of medium and heavy duty vehicles must be zero emission by 2045. Building on this historic commitment, Governor Newsom's proposed state budget includes a $1.5 billion investment to achieve the state's zero emission vehicle goals. The budget proposes to securitize up to $1 billion to accelerate the pace and scale of the infrastructure needed to support zero emission vehicles. The budget proposal will leverage additional private sector capital to build the necessary infrastructure, while also creating jobs that will support California's economic recovery. I uh, am very excited about the possibility of accelerated investments in zero emission vehicle infrastructure and this potential boost from the legislature. And we are welcoming the collaboration and conversation we're having on this important topic. Now I'm going to introduce a message from our first speaker, Senator Elena Gonzalez. Senator Gonzalez was first elected to the state Senate to represent the 33rd district in a special election in June of 2019. She was subsequent, uh, subsequently re-elected in the November uh, 3rd, 2020 general election for her first four-year term. As state senator, she represents nearly 1 million residents in Southeast LA, Signal Hill, portions of South Los Angeles and Lakewood, and her hometown of Long Beach. She was recently appointed as the new chair of the state of the Senate Transportation Committee, becoming the first Latina to ever serve in this capacity and the only woman to serve in the last 20 years. Prior to being elected to the state Senate, she worked in the private sector and served on the Long Beach City Council from 2014 to 2019, representing 50,000 residents in downtown Long Beach, including the port of Long Beach. Of, of Long Beach. Now we'll have a short video. Hi everyone, State Senator Lena Gonzalez here, proudly representing Long Beach and Southeast Los Angeles. And I'm very happy to join the California Energy Commission and CalSTART to announce the nation's very first incentive project for zero emission truck and bus infrastructure. Investments in cleaner transportation technology are long overdue as we know. The transportation sector is responsible for more than half of all of California's carbon pollution, 80% of smog forming pollution, and 95% of toxic diesel emissions. It's clear that if we want a healthier future for all, we must fight pollution now. 
There's no denying that climate change is happening now. Pollution caused by transportation is worsening with wildfires, raising our sea levels, and making the air we breathe unbreathable. This is not fair. Air pollution has already taken a heavy toll on the health of our communities. In my district, many families that live near the 710 freeway are low-income communities of color, including children, pregnant women, and seniors that suffer from high rates of respiratory illness and who are more likely to suffer from chronic diseases like asthma, heart disease, and lung cancer. This is not fair. Our communities cannot wait, and this is why I'm fully supportive and excited that we're taking bold steps toward a cleaner technology for truck and bus fleets in our communities. As Chair of Senate Transportation, I will always do everything in my power to advance and promote the use of cleaner vehicle technologies at our ports, roads, and major freeways. This year, I've introduced two bills that will help us move toward cleaner freight and transportation. First, my bill SB 726 will reauthorize and revitalize the state's clean transportation program, which provides the funds for the project being announced today and many others. SB 726 will also prioritize equity first and align the clean transportation program with the state's current environmental targets to ensure that we are funding more projects to move us in the right direction in our state. I've also introduced SB 671 to require the California Transportation Commission and the California Air Resources Board to create a clean freight corridor assessment. The assessment will develop clean freight guidelines that can be applied to the five largest freight corridors in California. I wanna close by saying thank you so much to the California Energy Commission, to CalSTAR and other partners who have developed and launched this new incentive program for cleaner truck and bus fleet technologies. I know it's not only helping the state, but particularly low income communities that need the help the most. I'm very hopeful and look forward to the outcomes of this comprehensive program that will provide fleet managers with technical, financial, and operational assistance they need for the implementation of cleaner vehicle technologies. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Senator Gonzalez, for your leadership and support. And I really appreciated um, the Senator's strong focus on equity. I mean, this is really about making sure that communities that's disproportionately impacted by air pollution can breathe easier. So next we have Alicia Gildy, the CalSTAR Senior Director of the Clean Fuels and Infrastructure Initiative. Ms. Gildy is advancing the nation's largest programs to develop and implement alternative fuel corridors for light, medium, and heavy duty vehicles. She also leads CalSTAR's efforts to administer the California Air Resources Board Clean Off-Road Equipment Voucher Incentive Project. Prior to working at CalSTAR, Ms. Gildy managed one of the nation's largest vehicle and freight emission reduction programs for New York and New Jersey, the South Bronx Point, and San Pedro Bay. Thank you, Commissioner Monahan. As a national nonprofit organization dedicated to advancing clean transportation, we know infrastructure is the next challenge. We are excited to have this opportunity to develop and implement the world's first dedicated incentive project for medium and heavy duty electric charging and hydrogen refueling infrastructure. For over 10 years, CalSTART has led large scale incentive projects like the California Air Resources Board, HVIP and CORE that have transformed the marketplace for clean commercial vehicles in California, the US and beyond. However, as the market has seen a surge in zero emission vehicle advancements, one big adoption barrier remains, the cost of infrastructure. By applying the user-friendly and seamless approach of a voucher program, the Energize Commercial Vehicles Project will make it easier and faster for fleets to get the resources to buy down the cost of infrastructure. We realize that there is no one size fits all approach to infrastructure and have designed a project that keeps the spirit of HVIP while working closely with applicants to meet the unique needs of each infrastructure project. As CalSTART, its project team, and the Energy Commission begin the development phase of Energize, there are three necessary elements that are key to the success of building California's infrastructure for a zero emission transportation future. First, I would like to highlight the importance of collaboration CalSTART, along with its long-term partner and voucher administrator, TetraTech, and its equity partner, Grid Alternatives, will work closely with the Energy Commission to collaborate with funding agencies, air districts, industry, utilities, and community leaders to 
on project development and implementation. Importantly, this collaboration also means when someone receives funding for a commercial vehicle, we can help connect them to funding for infrastructure, not just energized funding, but utility, air district, and other funds. Second, technical assistance. For fleets exploring a zero emission vehicle solution, infrastructure planning can be quite daunting if not provided with technical support. CalStart has a solution. The Energized Commercial Vehicles Project will provide a one-stop shop for infrastructure planning through its Infrastructure Readiness Center. Lastly, but most important, it is imperative that our communities most impacted by transportation emissions reap the rewards of the project's infrastructure incentives. CalStart and Grid Alternatives will develop a community engagement plan that will include multilingual and culturally appropriate outreach, needs assessments, and access to educational funding and partner resources. The goal is to advance zero emission transportation projects that directly benefit communities. Commissioner Monahan, we look forward to working with you and your incredible team to energize the market which, with much needed infrastructure investments. We believe the Energize project will become the model for speeding zero emission commercial vehicle infrastructure worldwide. Thanks, Alicia, for those great remarks. Um, I got to say, as a woman who's been working in the clean transportation fuel field for 25 years, I'm very entertained that all the speakers today are women. <laughs> so it shows how far we've come. Uh, so um, now, buckle your seatbelt, because we're going to be traveling across California to get acquainted with three organizations who are helping the state deliver on our clean transportation goals. These include the Port of Long Beach, Frida Lay in Modesto, and AC Transit in my home county of Alameda. So you're going to learn about each organization's zero emission fleet and infrastructure, including various technologies that we'll be funding through the new Energized Commercial Vehicles Project. Some of what you'll see was funded as demonstration and deployment projects by the California Energy Commission, the California Air Resources Board, and others to help bring these technologies to market uh, to, and to get operators uh, more familiar with what's available and what the benefits could be of having their emission vehicle options. So we're going to start in Senator Gonzalez's district at the Port of Long Beach, which combined with the Port of Los Angeles handled more containers per ship than any other port complex in the world. Half of all U.S. imports from Asia come through these two ports. But since most of the equipment, existing equipment is diesel powered, these ports are also unloading significant amounts of air pollution into nearby communities. Today, these ports and other ports in California are increasingly part of the solution, leading the way as some of California's earliest adopters of, of clean zero emission technology. At the Port of Long Beach, a zero emissions demonstration project is underway at ITS at Pier G, where seven electric vehicles are being tested to determine feasibility and scalability. The trucks and the charging stations have been built by BYD, a large manufacturer of electric vehicles. Their goal is to design and manufacture a robust electric truck that can be charged quickly between shifts and work multiple shifts. This is critical as the ability to guarantee efficient port operations is a key requirement for the large scale deployment of this new zero emissions technology. For this demonstration, six out of the seven trucks will be charged using BYD's Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment, or EVSE, which is another name for charging stations. So there's been a little bit of a learning curve. Every terminal is a little bit different, but overall, this is our second generation yard tractor, so we've already done a lot of testing, implemented upgrades to the trucks over the course of the past two or three years. And now really with this project, we're working with ITS and the Port of Long Beach to make sure that these trucks can operate in their facilities as well. And so far, I think it's been a success, but we're still have some things to learn and we'll see how it goes. This demonstration also explores mechanized charging, which involves the use of a robotic arm to charge when the yard tractor is safely parked. Cavotech, a Swiss-based company that has been building charging stations for larger port equipment and ferries around the world, is testing their first smart plug-in system on one BYD yard tractor adapted for their unique charger. So this is a hands-free unit. That means all the risk that goes along with the connection and disconnection of a 
powered connection goes away. And you don't have to worry about that. In terms of sustainability, we are talking about electric vehicles and keeping a cleaner environment, cleaner air, which is all part of the zero emissions project here at Port Long Beach. This demonstration project is one of three funded through a $9.7 million grant from the California Energy Commission. For more information, visit polb.com forward slash zero emissions. All right, now we're heading north to Modesto where Frito-Lay is shipping away on its efforts to improve air quality in the heart of the Central Valley through near zero and near zero transportation investment. The company is among many corporate leaders who are investing in the state's clean transportation future by committing to replace old polluting equipment with clean battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell options. You're looking at the first of its kind 500,000 square foot Modesto facility, a part of the company's commitment to a broader sustainability strategy. Since 2019, the company has added about 60 tractors, box trucks, and forklifts powered by electric and renewable natural gas technologies. And 15 more electric tractors will be deployed later this year. Along with cleaner air for workers and the local communities, the investment is also good for their budget, lowering operational costs while addressing climate change. The zero and near zero emissions technologies have already had a huge impact on the local air quality for the community, reducing the fleet's absolute emissions by more than 50% and lowering fleet diesel usage by 78%. The site is also converting 100% renewable electricity for direct operations at the site, all in hopes of reducing the company's environmental impact even more. Well, um, last but not least, I welcome you to my home in San Francisco's East Bay region, where we are privileged to have sweeping views of urban waterfront, charming neighborhoods, and plenty of local eateries. But we also experience the harmful impacts of air pollution from diesel-powered vehicles and equipment. And AC Transit has long been a leader in addressing this problem through its commitment to cleaner transportation. AC Transit continues to transform clean transportation technology. Since the year 2000, the agency has been building one of the most comprehensive zero-emission bus programs in America. Starting with hydrogen fuel cell technology, and recently expanding to include battery electric buses. Today's fleet includes five electric buses, 21 hydrogen buses, and one 60-foot demonstration hydrogen fuel cell electric bus. Zero emissions fueling spans AC Transit service areas, including Emeryville and East Oakland. Grants like the new Energize Commercial Vehicles program allows AC Transit to speed up its zero emission expansion efforts by funding essential infrastructure projects. As the agency works to transition the entire bus fleet to 100% zero emissions by 2040. An effort that will reduce greenhouse gases and contribute to better health in the communities it serves. Well, I hope you enjoyed our virtual program. Uh, and now we're gonna turn it over to you and, and respond to your questions. So we're opening up questions. Using the Q&A box, just uh, identify your organization and whether you're a member of the media. Um, and members of the media, please indicate whether you would prefer to ask your question directly and the moderator will unmute your line once selected. Okay, well, um, thanks again, everyone, for participating. Um, again, use the Q&A function to submit any questions. Looks like we've answered most of folks' questions this morning, which means we've had a great program here. Um, so while we're waiting for some questions to trickle in, um, Alicia, why don't you talk a little bit about the months ahead for CalSTAR and how stakeholders can engage in the development of this project? Oh, that sounds great. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. Well, we, we certainly have a lot of work to do, but we're super excited. We have this incredible 
team at CEC to work with on the development stage of this project. Uh, this is going to be a stakeholder driven process, though. We want to make sure that we're designing a project that is going to be appropriate for the industry, is inclusive of communities, and that we can really make sure that we're advancing technology to really support uh, the infrastructure development needs that we need in California. Great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we've got a, a couple of questions about um, eligibility. So uh, one question just about the status of the project, um, and I'll just clarify that to make it easy. Last month, the project was approved by the commission. And so um, now the funds are going out the door to CalSTAR and the project um, is to be designed. So the project has been approved and it's gonna be happening. Um, so Alicia, would you talk a little bit about who might be eligible for the program? We have a question about whether local governments with the bus transportation system may be eligible for the incentive project. Sure, no problem. Um, thank you for the good question. So eligibility will be determined through the process of developing a project implementation manual. I would say that we understand the urgent and dire demand for incentives to support infrastructure development for fleets, both public and private, that have been pursuing funds to support the deployment of commercial zero emission vehicles. They will certainly be eligible to participate in this project. We wanna make sure that we're helping them to get access to the funding resources to deploy uh, their vehicle fleet successfully. Um, but we will be going through a thoughtful process at making sure that we're considerate of all the requirements uh, to really help enable the market for participant participation. Thank you. Um, lots of curious folks who sounds like they're, they're gonna be applicants as soon as um, the applications open here. Um, one question about um, the, uh, the EJ uh, aspect of this project. Um, can you expand on how uh, CalSTAR will be monitoring the success of the community engagement plan? Sure, absolutely. When designing this project, uh, we really wanted to make sure that we were putting communities first. Uh, we realized that it is critical if we really want to advance zero emission transportation in California, that we really need to be prioritizing our communities that are most impacted by transportation emissions. We have an incredible partner, um, Grid Alternatives, who really have been leaders in working with communities throughout California and outside of California to help them get access to resources for energy and clean transportation. So we're gonna be working with Grid Alternatives and an incredible network. CalSTART has been working with funding agencies across the state along with the air districts and community organizations to really make sure that we're building capacity to, to reach those communities that may seem to be hard to reach to make sure that they're aware of this project and they're given the resources and support to participate in the program. Great, thank you, Alicia. Um, got a lot of questions coming in. Um, so I'd encourage folks, we actually have the upvote feature uh, that is engaged in our Q&A box. So if there's a question there uh, that folks want to uh, elevate as something that is a priority to answer as we um, take a, a final few questions, that would be great. Um, so, all right, we've got the upvote engaged. Will public fueling stations uh, be eligible for funding? That's a great question. Uh, that will also be an important topic as we evaluate eligibility for the type of projects. I would say that you know providing uh, charging and refueling um, at public locations is gonna be critical to really drive the commercial market. So that's gonna be an incredible aspect of evaluating the eligibility for the projects under this Energize Commercial Vehicles project. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, and then, uh, last question that I think I'll take, um, because this relates to many of the questions that we have in the stream here, is um, who will be in hosting the stakeholder process and perhaps specifics on how folks can get engaged in the stakeholder process and get all of these questions um, answered, or at least on the table for consideration. Great. Well, no problem. Um, CalSTART will certainly would love to hear your uh, your feedback and uh, would love to collaborate with you. Uh, we do have a email address that everyone can send their questions, um, introduce themselves, um, share ideas and questions that you might have that we can answer at infrastructure at calstart.org. Again, that's infrastructure at calstart.org. Excellent. And I think that is a perfect segue to close our um, program here. Um, so folks with any lingering questions, we will hand these over um, to CalSTART uh, to, to respond to 
and um, also to flush out on their website with the resources that are going to be to come as the pro a project gets developed. So with that, I'll turn over to Commissioner Monaghan if you want to um, provide any closing remarks and close the program here today. Well, I just appreciate um, the questions and we are very excited about this program. It really brings together, you know, our, our goal of uh, accelerating a clean energy economy and making sure that this is something that benefits all Californians and especially those that live in communities disproportionately impacted by air pollution. So thank you. We're excited to work with CalSTAR, Delicia, and her team. Uh, so thanks everybody and have a good rest of your day.